Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with PrevMed, HeartRest.com. Uh, prevention of heart attack, stroke, and cancer. Why uh, worry about a cure when you can prevent it altogether? This is a follow-up to uh, another video called How to Drop Your Artery Age uh, by 20 Years, like I did. Um, <clears throat> some, someone pointed out to me that I didn't show the second CIMT, and I'll do that in this video. Uh, before we do, though, um, let's review quickly what we're talking about. CIMT stands for Carotid Intima Media Test, uh, Thickness Test, and again, what does that mean? Well, let's just look quickly at some uh, diagrams to see what's going on as a review. This is a normal artery. We're worried about these two layers here. The first one is a lining, which keeps the blood from clotting, and some other metabolic uh, things. The second one is a muscle layer which provides the structure. If you didn't have that muscle layer, this inner layer, the in endothelium or intima, uh, would just burst apart. Now what routinely happens is that the uh, LDL, uh, low density lipoproteins, will often go right through the intima. Now if you see, uh, this is a cross section of an artery, this is called the lumen or the hole where the where the blood flows. This is the intima, this very thin layer here, and that's the media. All of this is plaque. It's basically LDL that has gone through the intima layer. Uh, this is waxy in consistency. Uh, this is hot. And again, uh, hot meaning that uh, enzymes like LP uh, Plaque 2, LP plaque 2, um, myeloperoxidase, other enzymes have gone in at the, at the direction of the immune system and dissolved a lot of that. So that's a liquid uh, plaque. This is just a larger view of that. So a couple of things you can see here. Number one, plaque doesn't fill the inside of the hole or the lumen like hair in a drain. It, you don't get a heart attack from uh, slow occlusion or blockage of that hole. You get it from fast occlusion. And how does the fast blockage occur? Uh, this gets released. But this is not enough to block that hole. Here's the problem. This hot or inflamed plaque, when it releases, if it, it gets through the, uh, the intima layer, and you can see there's very little uh, structure keeping it away from the blood, this uh, inflammation causes um, clot formation. And that is exactly what happened with this patient that had a heart attack. This was the intima layer. This was a what we call a hot area like you saw a few minutes ago of liquid hot inflammation. This was another hot area. You can't really see the media very well. It's out here, but that's the intima. And you see you formed cracks in the intima. That uh, liquid, hot, inflamed plaque got out. And this is not plaque here. This, is, this black thing is um, a clot. The clot went on down in, into the area of the artery wall where uh, the hot plaque was. And you can see it formed out here, too. The vast majority of this clot is, is not here, though. It broke off, went to the heart, and killed this patient. So that's what we're trying to avoid. Speaking of uh, plaque forming in the artery wall, you can see this progression of plaque formation. Now, when you look at things like uh, stress tests, they don't show a positive until you get a over a half occlusion or blockage of the intima, I mean of the uh, lumen, the, the ability for flow. As you can see, there is a lot of plaque formation which precedes that. Now how can we measure that? Well you certainly can measure it with uh, a stress test. Uh, Tim Russert, for example, had a normal stress test three months before he died. Once they went in and did a post-mortem, 
they said his arteries looked like this. They looked like uh, a teenager's face with lots of pimples and problems, bumps, like you see on this plaque artery. So if you go back to my previous um, video, you see that uh, even though I was uh, maybe a poster boy for uh, for heart attack and stroke prevention, I had great diet, I had great exercise, uh, my BMI's had always been less than 25. Um, I expected to do a victory lap after my first CIMT. Instead, what I found was that my CIMT level was that of a 73 year old. Why, why is that? Uh, here's the 73 year old. This is a normogram. This shows what you would expect by age for men and what you would expect by age for women. Now, how does that normogram work? Well, there's a normal process of um, LDL going into that, um, that layer between the intima and media layer. And you can act, they've actually done tons of studies to look by age. You can have an expectation. Now, if you get really deep into the um, into the science, there's a lot of argument and debate about whether this concept of art, arterial age using CIMT should be used. Um, I understand the reasons behind it, and the, re the reality is, technically, what you're looking for is ingress or egress of the LDL into that uh, intima media space. For reasons of translation and simplicity and ability of patients to understand this, I don't see us getting away from the concept of arterial age anytime soon. And you'll see on my CIMTs that they dropped steadily over an 18, 20 month period. And again, this, is, uh, this will show you that. Uh, the age dropped from that of a 73-year-old to that of a 52-year-old. Um, whether you believe in uh, arterial age estimation or not, it is crystal clear I had massive egress or massive uh, amounts of LDL getting pulled out of the space between my intimate and media. So as you go back and you look at this, now, one of the other things you could, one of the other debates you could say is, well, uh, this is a very, uh, a very um, broad assumption, and you can get a lot of variation. Well, uh, let's look at variation for a second. As I mentioned earlier, I am able because of what I do to get a lot of these, and my uh, numbers steadily dropped. From here, you can see they went from 73 to 59 to 52. So uh, that makes it pretty clear. And I can tell you there were several CIMTs in between. If you look at my place on the normogram, it started up here, then dropped here, and then here. Another way to look at this, and so here's the statement about it's uh, the numbers of a 52-year-old, and I'm, by, I'm 59, by the way, I'm two months away from becoming 60. Here's a number, another number to look at. Uh, my average uh, amount was 0.672. If you go back to my original um, CIMT thickness, my average was 0.884. So again, whether you believe in, uh, in arterial age as a concept or not, it's really clear. I pulled a lot of um, LDL out of that space between my uh, intima and media. That's a good thing. That's an excellent thing that uh, is improving my arterial health dramatically. As I mentioned before, it wasn't that I had a whole lot of room, wiggle room in terms of changing my um, my lifestyle. I did lose another five pounds or so. I also um, 
increase my salmon, change some uh, um, supplements, added uh, niacin, for example. Um, but the bigger issue, I have to tell you, was me getting on a statin in the right one, uh, Crestor or Resuvastatin, and me changing my blood pressure medicine from Losartan, which is an ARB, to Ramipril, which is an ACE inhibitor. Now, <clears throat> so that provides a little bit more documentation, a little bit more explanation regarding this um, issue of arterial age estimation, how you can actually pull LDL out of that intimate media space, um, but maybe a little follow-up. So, um, I have also continued to watch and manage my um, insulin resistance. As uh, you may have asked, well, this guy's doing all the right stuff in terms of heart attack and stroke risk. Why has he got those kind of arteries? It's genetics. I have very uh, significant uh, 9P21. Remember, that's the gene that we originally thought was a cancer gene. Then later on, we thought it was a heart attack gene. Uh, we found out something that puts all of that together. It's a diabetes gene. I have a very strong um, uh, positive finding for that gene. Um, and there's another thing you need to know about insulin resistance. Over half of us get um, insulin resistance by the time we're age 60. By the time we're age 65, a quarter of us are full-blown diabetic, and that's by ADA definition, and that is an extremely conservative definition. You're doing tons of damage to your arteries and your heart and your uh, kidneys and your eyes and um, erectile uh, function mechanisms and all, all of your tissues before you get a full-blown diagnosis of uh, diabetes by ADA. We'll talk about that later. But <clears throat> again, that was my problem. What I have to tell you, though, is my uh, oral glucose tolerance test became very positive just over the past few months. So now I've got a whole new set of issues I have to deal with. I didn't have to deal with those earlier. And if I'm going to maintain that, in, that egress, uh, that continued um, process of getting younger, I'm going to have to deal with my uh, insulin resistance issue because it's increasing because I'm a human and I've got 9P21, like most of the rest of us. Um, I have already started doing that with combinations of uh, pioglitazone and metformin. Uh, you can see that in other videos. Thank you.